We want to talk to you a little bit about the coming kingdom of the divine will, and perhaps the greatest revelation in the history of the church herself, next to the Bible, next to the scriptures. The kingdom of the divine will comes from the book of heaven, a book given to the servant of God, Louisa Picaretta. All 36 volumes have received not only the imprimatur from the local bishop, which is necessary in Italy, but the Vatican also assigned two theologians to study all 36 volumes line by line for several years. And they came back with a full approval. And so now there's a second imprimatur over the writings of Louisa Picaretta and the Divine Will, a second imprimatur from the Vatican itself. And the revelations are stunning. They're basically, I would say, the blueprint for the era of peace that's coming, the blueprint. The Lord himself told this beautiful saintly woman, the servant of God, Louisa, that the world would be transformed into something like the Garden of Eden. And all men and women would be filled with the Holy Spirit in a new and ravishing way, living within the divine will, all of us. And so these 36 volumes, they're not large volumes, but they're certainly significant. And they reveal the mysteries of the time that's coming. The Lord called it the complete fulfillment of His prayer, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, the complete fulfillment. When we say, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. The fullness of God's will has not yet been completed or done on the earth. Something more is needed, the complete fulfillment of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. And that is nothing less than a world of saints, a world and a community of saints. That's what's coming. It's something so stupendous. And yes, the first priest to give the imprimatur, to study the writings of Louisa, to submit them to his bishop, his name was Annabel or Annabali Francia. He is now Saint Annabel. John Paul canonized this priest who gave the first imprimatur. So we know these writings are solid beyond solid, solid beyond solid. A new holiness is coming to the earth, a higher holiness, the fulfillment of what Jesus was doing at Calvary. It's something stupendous and something marvelously joyful. One way to begin to perceive a little of what this is all about, what's coming now, with complete approval of Holy Mother Church, is to perhaps read the prayer of consecration to the Holy Divine Will. This prayer of consecration is from the bishop of the Diocese of Trani, where Louisa lived and died. Let me read this consecration to us. I do this now daily. It's so beautiful. This will give our listeners some idea of what to expect, what to expect. Here's how the consecration goes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, this is the Archbishop approved and promulgated consecration. O oh, adorable and divine will, here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it, to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore, prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures, come, O oh, adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat. Prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light, that it may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that I may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you divine will. It shall be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapturer of my heart and of my whole being. In this heart, the human will shall no longer have life. I shall banish it forever and shall form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. With it, I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength 
and a sanctity that sanctifies everything and brings everything to God. Here prostrate, I invoke the help of the Sacrosanct Trinity, that they admit me to live in the cloister of the Divine Will, so as to restore in me the original order of creation, just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, Sovereign Queen of the Divine Will, take me by the hand and enclose me in the light of the Divine Will, you shall be my guide, my tender mother. You shall guard your child and shall teach me to live and maintain myself in the order and in the bounds of the divine will. Celestial Sovereign, to your immaculate heart I entrust my whole being. I shall be the tiny little child of the divine will. You shall teach me the divine will, and I shall be attentive in listening to you. You shall lay your blue mantle over me, so that the infernal serpent may not dare to penetrate into this sacred Eden, to entice me and make me fall into the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good, Jesus! You shall give me your flames, that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me, to form in me the life of the Supreme Will. Saint Joseph, you shall be my protector, the custodian of my heart, and shall keep the keys of my will in your hands. You shall keep my heart jealously, and shall never give it to me again that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Guardian angel, guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so that my Eden may grow flourishing and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. Amen. This is the consecration to the divine will. It's just like a landing platform. It's a place to get started, to start flying. Beloved, God has planned for the human race a beauty and a joy beyond description. Satan will not have the last word. Sin will not have the last word. Atheism, agnosticism, even blasphemy will not have the last word, no. God's holy divine will will have the last word. And he will raise up in the church and through the church, through the grace of the divine will, he will raise up the immaculate bride, the spotless bride of the Catholic Church that will be ready for his second coming. Amen. Mm -hmm.